This is probably like one of the dumbest things that I ever did because What is up YouTube and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elon Muscular and this is the sixth video in the new series entitled My Experience. This video is all about my experience with post cycle therapy or PCT. So to start off the video I want to talk about what is PCT and why do people do it. Basically what PCT is is post cycle therapy and the reason that people engage in post cycle therapy is because for a long time there has been this idea that if you are taking performance enhancing compounds you should do them in cycles and then come off of them so stop taking them and during that time you need to restore your hypogonadal axis back to normal so basically go back to a baseline of natural until you start enhancing again. So the idea here is that you know you take a cycle let's say some level of testosterone for 16 weeks and put on a certain amount of muscle like 10 20 pounds of muscle right and then after that you want to keep as much as you can of that so you want to prevent your testosterone level from crashing because after you discontinue the use of your cycle your testosterone will plummet down to zero and you want to you know bring it back to normal natural levels as quickly as possible so you can keep some at least of the gains that you made before you wait a period of time so that your body can you know replenish and heal up and then you go again and build on that so you're constantly in this up and down you're constantly in this flux of elevated hormones, uh, de-escalated hormones, bringing back to a baseline and then up again. Now at this point I understand that this sort of strategy of constantly going up and down doesn't really make sense and it's not something that I would recommend but back in the day you know there's a lot of information online about how to do properly a post cycle therapy and when, when you look up first cycle guides a lot of people are talking about how you have to have your post cycle therapy prepared before you even engage in your first cycle and this sort of thinking that you know coming off is something that you should be doing as often as possible consistently and that it should be a part of your long term strategy as an enhanced athlete. So the first time that I you know came off was after my first cycle of 16 weeks and I used 500 milligrams of testosterone a week and then after that I had to do a post cycle therapy in order to basically get my testosterone levels back to normal. Now at the time I was 21 years old and I didn't really, I was skeptical of all this because I listened to some golden era guys and back in the day, back in the golden era, like the 70s, 80s, 90s, they didn't have post psychotherapy medications. They didn't have HCG, they didn't have Novadex, they didn't have Clomid, they did not basically do any PCT and they said oh we recovered just fine our testosterone levels came back you know we were young we were healthy why wouldn't they come back so I kind of got into this way of thinking but what I didn't realize is that those guys they did not have any research they didn't know for a fact that their testosterone levels come back they were not getting tested many of them might have been lightly monitored by some kind of like steroid doctor but ultimately health wasn't really their number one priority and it honestly wasn't really mine back then when I first started back at 21 doing my first cycle. So after my first cycle my PCT was nothing. I just came off and then I just continued living my life. I continued training, I continued eating right and I thought that I was super smart because I didn't really lose a lot of the gains that I made. Everything was completely fine and I felt normal and didn't really have any negative side effects. Now if you watch my video on LGD, uh, towards the end of my course with LGD I actually had erectile dysfunction, I had low testosterone, but after coming off my first cycle of testosterone itself I did not experience any symptoms like this and the reason for this is because what I was doing was taking testosterone in enthe and before I went down and off of it I tapered down from 500 milligrams to 250 milligrams and because of the long ester no this is just my theory I don't have any blood tests to prove this but by the time the long ester of 250 milligrams cleared my system which took about four weeks my body since I was young and healthy was already starting to boot back up and I kind of just went on with no interruption I didn't have erectile dysfunction depression none of those negative side effects so I just kept going and for the next two or three months I trained naturally until it was time for 
for my next cycle. So that PCT, I would say, was successful in my mind, although I had no data to back it up at all. Now, I kept cycling and just consistently doing things, and then after that, I did not attempt to come off anymore. The most time that I would be off was just about like four weeks, but after maybe like six months more of consistently using things and coming back down to TRT, I started to get paranoid and realize, you know, what are the long-term repercussions of my actions? I never had a blood test, I never had anything done, and at that point, I started to do more research into post-cycle therapy, cruising, and I became super confused, like what is the right way? How can I do this in a healthy way? I tried to talk to doctors, but none of them had any advice for me, obviously, other than just stop taking steroids, son. And I really did not know what to do and the anxiety started to build up in me. So I kept using steroids because I wasn't really sure what to do. And I just stayed on TRT for maybe the next year and intermittently doing these cycles like I talked about, the DECA only cycle in one of my uh, videos. And then I also did a testosterone and Mastron and Trenbolone cutting cycle. And then after that, I kind of realized that I wasn't in a point in my life where I wanted to do bodybuilding anymore. And I had consistently been on steroids, uh, you know, cruising and doing multiple cycles for about a year since I, you know, did that last kind of PCT and came off. And I realized that I didn't want to do this anymore. I wanted to be natural now. And that was my goal. So I started to do research on how to properly do a PCT and actually permanently come off steroids. And what I came across was a power PCT protocol by a doctor called Michael Scali. So I worked my, myself through this. I let the things I was taking clear out of my body and I did the power PCT. Now, while doing the power PCT, I felt completely like shit. The side effects that I got from Clomid especially were really bad. I started to feel depressed. And although my sex drive was okay and I still had some performance in the gym and stuff like that, I just generally felt like really bad in my body. This was probably like one of the dumbest things that I ever did because taking steroids is easy. You just, you know, you get them, you inject yourself with them, you work out, you make gains, everything is hunky-dory. But when it's time to come off, it can be very, very confusing. There's a lot of things that you're worried about, losing your gains, will your testosterone levels come back? So anyway, I did this power PCT to the best that I possibly could, try, uh, guiding myself through it. And I thought I felt okay by the end of it. So basically I just continued living my life. But after a while, you know, lifting became less of a priority for me. As I became more focused on my career, I stopped working out, I had stress at work, and I got my testosterone checked to see, you know, is everything all right? Maybe three, four months after that PCT, and my testosterone was low. My free testosterone especially was low. It was only a nine. And my total testosterone was like 384 or something like that. So my testosterone levels had not really replenished all the way and I wasn't really feeling healthy. Every time that I would work out, I would be super tired and I wasn't sure what to do. And honestly, I just forgot about it and maybe went like six to nine more months not even thinking about it at all because of everything going on in my life at that time. So that's why I advise guys, you know, to always work with a coach, work with a doctor, especially if you wanna come off, find a doctor who's educated on this stuff. Don't cheap out on it because this period of my life was very difficult for me, like emotionally and fitness wise, like it just, it was kind of like a mess. I didn't have so many negative side effects, like, I wasn't super depressed, nothing was like really bad, but I just generally had like lower testosterone levels than I would have had normally. And there was a little bit of like a haze over my life. I didn't have that same exuberance that I had, you know, when I was 20 years old before I ever did a cycle and like 21 to 22 and a half ish when I was, you know, cycling. I just, I didn't have that motivation. I didn't have that drive that I had when I had my testosterone levels back in high levels. So basically this story ends with me deciding to go back on testosterone replacement therapy and actually do it the right way this time, having blood tests now that I learned all these things and finally, you know, got all the guidance so I can make sure that I'm healthy, I'm monitored by doctors, my TRT is a prescription grade and that I can take that next step in my enhanced bodybuilding in a healthier manner and at this point have a long-term plan so I know what I'm going to be doing for the next 
10, 20 years, I know what TRT, what kind of effects it has on my health, what kind of effects it has on my cholesterol, what kind of effects it has on my hematocrit. I make sure I give blood, I get my blood work done at least twice a year, if I do a cycle more often than that. So I learned the healthy ways to stay on. So ultimately, what do I think about this whole experience? I know it was a little convoluted and the timeline might be a little bit confusing for you guys, because it was a confusing time for me where I really did not understand the off and on. And that's why I always talk about, you know, when you think about your first cycle, when you think about this in a, the form of cycles, you're thinking about it the wrong way. The way that you should look at it, in my opinion, is zero would be natural and one would be enhanced. And once you go from zero to one, it's very hard to go backwards. It's very hard to go backwards. And you're gonna probably be on TRT for the rest of your life. And there's been a lot of studies done with guys, you know, coming off of steroids. And it's been proven that, you know, to stop, your testosterone levels will always permanently be lower than if you are natural, if you have ever taken steroids. Now, of course, there's also studies showing that the muscle that you build while taking steroids will stay, but basically you're gonna have more muscle but less testosterone. So your life is gonna be worse and you might have a little bit more muscle, but over time it'll obviously start to degrade as your testosterone goes down, 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 down. So when you take steroids, you're permanently handicapping yourself basically if you are not gonna be enhanced forever. So it kind of, if you love bodybuilding and you love making gains and you love working out, you're not gonna be able to engage in that process anymore without at least being on exogenous TRT, like 100 milligrams a week, basically for the rest of your life. And this is true for the golden era guys. This is true for the modern guys. This is true for everybody because this is the way that the human body works when you introduce exogenous hormones into it. So I would say that, you know, if you're thinking about going down the path of being enhanced, whether it's taking SARMs or taking steroids, the first thing that most guys should do is figure out their strategy in terms of TRT. How are you going to get pharmaceutical testosterone? How are you gonna work with a doctor? How are you gonna monitor your health long-term for the rest of your life? Because you're gonna to wanna to do that for the rest of your life once you cross that line. So you have to make sure that you're ready to make that commitment. And my problem was, I didn't realize this was a lifetime commitment. I didn't realize all the downstream effects of what I was doing. And then I just, you know, kind of jerked around and tried to figure it out, was upset about it, was, you know, resistant to the truth. And the reason that I'm making these videos is because I just want to put the truth out there for you guys. And I don't care if, you know, if past Elon looks stupid, if you think present Elon is stupid for what he did in the past or what I'm doing right now, this is what happens. And I talk to guys every single day, you know, DMs, consultations. It's fun to talk about cycles. It's fun to ask me, you know, oh, what, what do you take? What's your stack? What's the best stack for bulking? That's all fun and games. But when it's time to PCT, when it's time to come off, that's when you have to pay the bill for, you know, the balance that you've been accruing, right? And the way to avoid that negative stuff is to have a serious, good, consistent testosterone replacement regimen under your belt so you know what your baseline is. Your new baseline will be different than your old baseline of natural. So PCT is only for somebody that wants to quit steroids for the reason of having a kid, you know, or they just wanna quit because you're done with bodybuilding, you don't wanna do it anymore, you know, something else has come up in life and you just can't be injecting yourself at all and you go to prison or something like that. You're ready to stop that is where PCT comes in, in my opinion. Otherwise, it's been shown that it's actually more healthy to cruise because going from elevated androgens to no androgens, to elevated to no, to elevated to no, and then taking all these toxic anti-cancer drugs, which is what these things are, like Novodex and Clomid, they're for women's breast cancer. You're taking cancer medications to bring your hormones back online and doing that consistently. If you believe that you have to PCT after every cycle, you're gonna be PCTing one, two times a year, and these drugs can have even more negative side effects than the testosterone itself. So what is the point of loading yourself with all this stuff constantly when all you wanna do is be healthy and make gains? If that's what you wanna do, then the best way to do it is to be on TRT between your cycles and keep the cycles super, super modest so you never have this super up and down swing. And it's been shown that having that up and down swing of androgens constantly can cause issues with the brain, it can cause issues with the heart. Having these constant jumps in weight and hormones all the time is just very, very unhealthy for the human body. So ho I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope you appreciate me sharing my experience and um, 
I really hope that you guys don't take this stuff for granted. Have a responsible strategy, okay? If you wanna hear more about the cutting edge things that we are doing to maintain, attain, and keep improving on awesome physiques in the long term with no bullshit, not lying to you, not telling you we're PCT when we're not, it's just uncensored, check out the Bodybuilding Lifestyle Podcast and download Shredded Secrets of Fitness Influencers because that guide is full of literally secrets that nobody will tell you except for me. So thanks for watching guys, peace.